This week we learned that this classic Minecraft painting is actually off a kebab. We also learned that this classic desert looking painting is actually off a rabbit sitting in front of a wasteland. And then we also learned that the original artist for Minecraft who made both of these paintings and this skull has a 3D rotating skull version of it because of course he does. Christopher Zetterstrand is the artist who made the original Minecraft paintings and after 10 years of silence he's finally started laying bare some of this stuff and that is alongside the new leaks we have regarding editor mode and that is alongside Microsoft filing a sneaky trademark for an ender dragon suggesting something of a new project. There is a lot going on this week. Let's dive into it. It is Q&A Saturday, your favorite weekly series where I answer your questions. But before I can answer all of your questions, I need to ask you, why aren't you subscribed? It is a great way to see more of these videos on your homepage and it gives me the tiniest bit of an ego boost. It'd be appreciated if you like hearing about the news because all of this news about the paintings is absolutely wild and we're absolutely going to dive into it. But it's also crazy that Microsoft have filed a new trademark for the Ender Dragon. This is something that I do in fact have thoughts on. Thank you for asking. I think Microsoft filing a trademark could just be a routine thing. They're slowly trying to lock down more and more of the IP that makes Minecraft so Minecrafty, and it could be something that is uh, due to a tiny Ender Dragon specific project. You know, they're making a Minecraft spin-off where you play as the Ender Dragon, but I think what is much, much more likely is the fact that they're actually going to be using the Ender Dragon as a major character in an upcoming IP. Is that going to be Minecraft Legend? I don't really think so, and I don't know if you'd need a trademark specifically for that. However, maybe they would need it if they were using it in the little Minecraft project you might have forgotten about, the Minecraft movie. The Minecraft movie has been put on hold time and time again. It was agreed almost 10 years ago now, but it's getting actually closer to coming out, or so we're led to believe, and so what if the Ender Dragon is a major character in it? Would make a lot of sense. Jason Momoa is going to fight some Ender Dragon-like character, and they need to make sure that they've got uh, the stuff locked down. It's very, very bizarre. Are, but that is the weirdness to do with Minecraft's uh, movie side of things. Let's talk about Minecraft's past a little bit because you might know uh, that there is literally one person who made most of the early music for Minecraft and there's one person who made the art and that person is called Zetterstrand. And so to celebrate 10 years of his paintings being in Minecraft, he actually went back and found one of the old 3D files that he used to make that old painting and you can see this skull painting, the one from Minecraft, actually looks like this when he made it in 3D. He used an incredibly complex 3D model as you can see in a Minecraft world if you look closely to make this skull and to prove that this was actually uh, his and his same thing he actually made it spin and then he made it spin and pixelated right here uh, just to kind of prove that this is very much a real 3D thing that results in a painting that looks this low quality and this made a lot of people realize that all of these pixelated paintings probably weren't made as pixelated to begin with something Zetterstrand has slowly been confirming uh, confirming that this image is actually a kebab and honestly when you look at this kebab it even looks confusing as one of those, right? I mean, those look like whole bananas that are chilling on the side, but they're actually, I think it's called a pepperoncini, a banana pepper. It's a, it's a thing that you can see on the side there. Uh, you can also see that this painting right here, which most people look at and see as a couple of batteries or as a, you know, like a desert with a cactus in the background. Nope, it's a rabbit in the wasteland. But more surprisingly, you get to stuff like the Wanderer, which is this painting. And he says that he sampled uh, this from this painting. And that came from this original painting from someone called Casper David Fred. But yeah, the fact that uh, this really ridiculously pixelated image of a man comes from a much more complex painting, which comes itself from a much more complex painting, is kind of a fun thing by itself. Also, this is the painting of a few guys at the beach, clearly. There's a lot going on there. And even more interesting than any of that is the fact that these flowers, or you know, this flower in front of the sea, is actually a set of flowers in front of a painting. In fact, so many of Zetterstrand's paintings are things in front of paintings, which are then simplified down into Minecraft. And so this this generic blue skull is actually a man sitting on a really plush looking sofa staring at a rib cage of a man who's got a painting of a mountain behind him. What sort of insane art is this? I mean like in Minecraft it looks like pretty standard. Same with this image of like an angel flying from a platform. It's actually a much more complex thing of a painting in the background of a block with a... Uh, honestly, okay, the more you look into any of these the more broken you're gonna get. But the one final one I want to share that's interesting to me is this which is one of his original paintings paintings of the weird child with an RGB, uh, which he actually decided to change to a pig's head to make this Minecraft painting. And I just think it's absolutely fascinating the process that goes into designing all of this art. Um, even like the, the little pink man with the hat on uh, is actually from a much more complex painting. Uh, honestly, art is super complex, right? And now you know, it, even to make really weird pixelated things, there's such a deep process that we just didn't know about until now. And so now you know that this really complicated painting is a kebab 
Does that make you feel better about Minecraft? What should definitely make you feel better about Minecraft though is this next question on my editor mode video from Mod Denby. Can you copy and paste between world? So fun fact, right now you can actually do that using a structure block. It's a little bit messy, but you can totally do it. However, uh, speaking, uh, you know, it's funny because we just mentioned how Roger Badgman went away yesterday, but a lot of people have seen leaks of what's going to be possible in editor mode from Dark Gamer, who uh, obviously it's worth mentioning that although uh, these have come across as leaks, what they actually are is this is him making some add-ons to the uh, you know to the, the project however the fact that you can actually so easily as you can see in these videos place a cylinder or place a sphere I think that looks especially cool or place structures just by slowly editing and you know the fact that we already have mods that can do that stuff gives me promise that yeah there are going to be more than three tools eventually for editor mode and honestly I'm really looking forward to those I also am looking forward to this other comment on that same video why is his wallpaper just an image of fries yeah I showed off the background to my uh, desktop in that same video to show you how to install editor mode and I was really confused as to why people were saying this because it's incredibly clear that I actually have chips as my background. I think people are mistaken. You know, maybe the resolution on their video isn't very high. They're watching in 144p. I can forgive them for now. Also, I can forgive Bert the noob for saying, I got a question. Can you upgrade diamond armor set that has been trimmed or will it stay diamond forever? This is actually a really fun question because obviously uh, no other armor type can be changed into another armor after being modified, uh, but diamond can turn into neverite. Can can you do it if you've already trimmed the armor? You know, let's let's find out in Minecraft itself. Okay, so this is a diamond chest plate. As you can see, it works. It's, it's just fine right now. And if I wanted to, I could turn this into a neverite uh, template uh, chest plate by putting that on there right now. But if I first, uh, instead of putting that on, I'll put an emerald on using the snout armor trim. And now I've created this armor, very much trimmed. It matches my helmet quite nicely, don't you think? I mean, is it a helmet or is it just a, a face cover at this point? It's a it's it's my way of robbing banks without it uh, becoming a big problem for me personally. But anyway, so uh, now that it's covering that up, you can see, and it matches that nicely, let's see what happens if we try to upgrade this to Neverite. The answer is it will upgrade with you, which is really interesting because now I have to wonder if you trim it with diamond, it will look, okay, actually, you know what, let's, okay, this is my curiosity. So if we now put the snout, I, 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 I guess this is the logical expectation. If we replace that with snout in diamond, so you can barely see it when it's in, uh, when it's like this, right? It barely looks like anything. It's basically nothing. Now that diamond trim will become really, really visible once we upgrade it to Neverite, right? Because, yeah, that's really interesting. You should pre-trim your armor because it will look so much better after you upgrade. So yeah, you can trim your diamond armor and it will be just fine when you upgrade to Neverite. Pretty cool fact to know. By the way, just to go back to the Roger Badgerman thing, I got this really interesting comment from Ashura Omega, who says, it's really sad that we've lost Roger Badgerman, but what Mojang did was justified. They can't have people leaking every important thing about updates. It's bad for business and for the game itself. And it's funny because this is such a controversial take. A lot of people either believe that leaking is a good thing and Mojang are doing it themselves, or they're like really horrified by the leaks and they're like, no, I hate that they're leaking, but I have to see it. And there's a part of me that sees both sides of this, but I, I realistically, do think, yeah, it's in Mojang's best interest to be in charge of the marketing machine. They don't want anyone or anything taking away the hype they're trying to produce for their things. But on the other hand, well, there's not actually much of another hand. It's just nice to know things. Uh, but it totally is a game of cat and mouse. Like, I'm not going to say that Roger Badgman is right or wrong. I'm not going to say Mojang are right and wrong. They're both clearly doing what's in their interests. And it's honestly just an interesting game to watch. Speaking of interesting games to watch, Statue says, I think they should add custom paintings if it's a customization up Day, but sadly, it's the last feature, and uh, obviously this is an interesting idea that I just found while I was looking at painting stuff, and it's an interesting thought that in the customization update, you could make custom paintings, but if it's something you really want to do right now, you sort of can make custom paintings, and the way you do that is by placing maps in an item frame, and then building something in an interesting shape. For example, I made Great Britain, and I sleep below it every night in my Let's Play world. But you could do anything you wanted in this exact same way. I even have a green screen room in my world by just having an entire green map. And yeah, there's lots of fun ideas you can play around with if you really feel like it. Speaking of things you might really feel like, uh, the final question comes in from Sea Goose. It was on my video. It's interesting, a lot of people are still watching that video of my last days in Superflat, uh, why I'm quitting uh, video. And uh, this one says, can you actually just give us tips on what you learned on Superflat so others can excel? Uh, you know, rather than saying I spent 100 days and now I'm done, I should instead leave them 
the message of what you can do better if you want to attempt super flat. So my first lesson is one, I mean, get your hands on the ultra flat map on the marketplace. It fixes a lot of problems with the super flat progression, allowing the never and the end to be possible. If you want to dive really deep into it, it might be worth spending the money. But my suggestion for anyone who thinks that's a bit too hard of an ad sale, which I'm just being honest, that is a map that I wanted to exist and that's why I put it out there. But in case you say like, okay, no, but what about regular super flat? I've already got a world. I would say you really need to focus on getting that lightning. And I think it might be worth even uh, like farming lightning overnight. I mean, if you just sleep somewhere, you know, you could set up a contraption where all of your pigs have a lightning rod on the farm and you can just AFK nearby them. And then eventually that lightning might go off. Uh, so that might be something worth investing in. You need to get up the tech tree as fast as you can. And so the first thing you do is a mob farm. The second thing you do is the drowns. And I think if you knew that you just needed to get as many golden apples as you could, as fast as you could, rather than doing what I did, which was meander around, get a golden apple here, a golden apple there, I think you'd make a lot more progress a lot faster. Anyway, speaking of more progress more faster, this video seems to have come to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. If you like this channel, then have you considered subscribing to it? Have you considered uh, maybe watching other videos? I upload them every single day. And uh, now that I've finished my 100 day nomad run, next week I'm going to be starting a bit of a new challenge. So if you like the live streams, there's going to be some fun stuff happening there. But if you don't like live streams, then I hope you look forward to whatever YouTube feeds you next. With that said, I'm now heading off to a uh, housewarming party. One of my friends got a flat. I'm very excited for him. Gonna gonna go and cheer him on. I'm gonna go warm up his house because God knows uh, with current electricity prices, that's needed. And uh, I hope that you have a good day and I'll see you next time. Okay. Okay.